so uh, wing bear uh, last time we discuss about the what are the types of the shear uh, ship shear slip no shear sign shear and powerpoint shear so it is a one, uh, slip shear is a one piece shear with curve the cutting edge having no additional part and it is common type of shear mostly used by the farmers it is simple in design okay now slip uh, no shear it has a shear in which the point of shear is provided by small uh, det uh, detachable uh, piece and it has the advantage that shear point can be replaced as when required and this point is worn out uh, and it can be changed without replacing the entire shear effect in the considerable economy now the shin shear it is a shear having a shin as an additional uh, part it is a similar to the slip shear with the difference that an extension is provided to it by the side of the mold board now bar point shear it is here in which the point of shear is provided by adjustable and replaceable bar and this bar serves the purpose of the point of shear and uh, land side of the plow now the mold board is the part of the plow which receives the furrow slice from the shear uh, it lift and uh, turns and break the uh, furrow slice isn't it and to separate the uh, to suit the different soil conditions crop requirement mold board has been designed in different shapes and it is made of the uh, mild steel or cast iron now the types of the mold board that is general purpose double sod or breaker or slide uh, this is the general purpose mold board it is uh, having a medium curvature lying between the stubble and sod and the sloping of the surface is gradual it turns the well defined furrow slice and pulverize the soil through and it has a fairly long mold board with a gradual twist and the surface being slightly convex then a stubble mold board it is a short uh, but broaded uh, mold board with a relatively abrupt curvature which lifts uh, which lift breaks and turns the furrow slides used in a stubble soil and this is the best suited to work in a stubble soil this type of mold board is not suitable for lands full of grasses. Sword or breaker mold board, it is a long mold board with a gentle curvature which lifts and inverts the unbroken furrow slice and it is used in a tough soil of the grasses. It turns over thickly covered soil and this is a very useful where complete inversion of the soil is required by far. This type has been designed for use in a sword soil. Then slat mold board, it is a mold board uh, whose uh, surface is made up of the slat place along with the length of the mold board so that there are gaps between the slats. Okay, and these types of the mold board is often used where the soil is sticky and because of the solid mold board does not score well in a sticky soil. Then a land side, it is a part of the flow which slides along the furrow wall. It helps in stabilizing the flow and resists the side pressure exerting by furrow slice. And the rear bottom end of the land side is uh, known as the hill which rubs against the furrow soil. Okay, you can see here. And now frog, it is a regular piece of the uh, metal to which the shear and mold board and land side are attached rigidly. This is the tail piece. It is an important extension of the mold board and which helps in turning a furrow slice. And flow accessories, a few accessories necessary for flow as such as a jointer, coulter or gauge wheel. Uh, flow accessories of the MPPO that is jointer and coulter. You can see here. What do you mean by jointer? It is a small irregular piece or metal having a shape of similar to an ordinary flow bottom. It looks like a miniature flow and its purpose is to turn over a small ribbon like furrow slides directly in front of the main flow part. And this small furrow slice is cut from uh, the left and upper side. Uh, this left, uh, the, uh, the, uh, it cut from the left and upper side and main furrow slice and is uh, inverted so that all trashes uh, on the uh, top of the soil are completely turned down and buried under the right hand corner of the 
furrow slice is cut from the left and upper side of the main furrow slice and is inverted so that all traces on the top of the soil are completely turned down and buried under the right hand corner of the furrow. Coulter is a, a device used to cut the furrow slice vertically from the land ahead of the flow bottom. It cuts the furrow slice from the uh, land and leaves the clear wall. It also cuts the trashes which are covered under the soil by flow. And the coulter may be rolling type of disc coulter or sliding type of knife coulter. This is the different types of the uh, coulter that is rolling knife, okay, reversible. Uh, standing and uh, fin coulter. So rolling type disc coulter it is round steel uh, which uh, uh, that sharpen on the edge of the suspended on shank and yoke from the beam. The edge of the coulter may be either smooth or notch. Sliding type knife coulter it is a stationary knife fixed downward in a vertical position on the beam and the knife does not roll over the ground but slip on the ground. The knife may be different shapes and sizes. This is a combination of the jointer and coulter. Now the gauge wheel, uh, it is auxiliary uh, wheel of an implement to maintain the uniform depth of the working. And the gauge wheel help to maintain the uniformity in respect uh, of the depth of flowing in different soil condition. And it is used to be placed in hanging position. The adjustment of molbar flow for proper penetration and efficient work by mulberry, uh, some clearance is provided in the flow, and this clearance is called the suction of the flow. The suction is mulberry flow is of the two vertical suction and horizontal suction. And vertical suction it is a maximum clearance under the land side, and the horizontal surface in the working position. And it is the vertical distance from the ground measured at the joining point shear and land side. It helps the flow to penetrate into the soil to proper depth, that is 3 to 5 mm. And this clearance varies according to the size of the flow. So you can see here the vertical clearance and vertical sections. Horizontal is a maximum clearance between the land side of the uh, and the furrow wall. That means the horizontal plane touching point of shear, its gunnel side of the hill of the land side. And the suction, uh, this suction helps the flow to cut the proper width of furrow slice and this clearance varies according to the size of the flow. And it is also known as the side clearance. And vertical cleavage is a vertical, uh, that is the, <coughs> it is a vertical plate of the number of holes at the end of the beam to control the depth of operation and to adjust the line of the pull. Then horizontal clave is, uh, it is a device to make the lateral adjustment of the flow relative to the line of the pull. Now you can see the flow size, uh, you can see it is uh, uh, denoted by the, uh, uh, that is the uh, blue lines and uh, red lines you can see here the perpendicular distance from wing of shear uh, to the line joining the point of shear and inside is called the size of the flow. The uh, center of resistance it is the point at which the resultant of all the horizontal and vertical forces act. The center lines at a distance equal to three fourth size of the flow from the shear wing. <coughs> the line of the pole, it is imaginary straight line passing through the center of the pole. You can see here passing through the center of the pole and the point of each and the center of the resistance. A pole, it is the force required to pull the implement. Draft is a, is a pole in a horizontal direction is called the draft and it is measured with an instrument known as the diameter and explosive in a cage. The draft uh, per unit uh, cross section uh, area of the furrow and unit draft is calculated by total draft upon furrow cross section area. Now, furrow cross section area is equal to full width, uh, uh, furrow width into depth of furrow. And furrow width is equal to flow size and number of the furrows. So, power required to pull the implement total draft of the flow is cutting the furrow slice. 
therefore drawpower horsepower is equal to draft into speed upon 4500 and the drawpower horsepower is calculated by this formula the draft into uh, draft in kg into speed in meter per second by 75 now the area covered theoretical field capacity is calculated the yeah, a is the area covered in hectare per uh, hours and w is the total width of flowing in uh, centimeter and s is the uh, speed of the flowing in kilometer per hour so field efficiency is calculated the formula becomes practical area covered a is equal to ws by 1000 into field efficiency by 100 now the effective field capacity is the actual field uh, area covered by the implement based on the total time consumed and its width and the uh, field efficiency it is the ratio of the field capacity to the theoretical field capacity expressed in a person therefore field efficiency is equal to effective field capacity upon theoretical field capacity into 100 and this is a part of the furrow you can see here <coughs> this is called as a line this is a furrow face and this is a furrow sole um, that is it's this part is called as a crop this is trashes how land is plowed uh, how is land is plowed you can see here the furrow wall furrow bottom this is the furrow stages and furrow land this is the dead uh, furrow this part is called the dead furrow and uh, on the uh, that uh, uh, it is this part is called the back furrow, head furrow and back furrow. Uh, so what I mean about furrow is the trench formed by implement in a soil during the field operation. And furrow slice, the mass of the soil cut, lifted and throw the one side is called the furrow slice. Furrow wall, it is undisturbed soil surface by the side of the furrow. Ground in the top portion of the uh, turn furrow slice is called the ground. Back furrow is the raised uh, ridge left at the center of the strip of the land when plowing is started from center to side. It's called as a back furrow. Dead furrow and an open trench left in between the two adjacent strip of land after uh, finishing the plowing is called as a dead furrow. Headland while plowing with a tractor, a strip of unplowed land is left at the each end of the field for a tractor to turn that is called uh, as the headland and now this is the method of the plowing uh, the gathering means when your plow works around a strip of plowed land and casting means the when your plow uh, you can see here the small tractor so so we will get the idea regarding the gathering and casting when you are the plowing works around a strip of unplowed land it's called the casting Gathering and casting normally un uneconomical. Uh, uh, now the gathering pattern of the plowing you can see from the center. Uh, this is the casting pattern of plowing from the edge. Now the continuous plowing, the method of tractor and plow uh, never run ideal for the uh, three fourth land, uh, width along with the headland, and never run in a space narrow than one fourth land width. Okay. This is the land flow system, uh, headlands start in the middle and leaves uh, at the level feet. This is a circuitous flowing pattern. Uh, flowing is done uh, from start at the outside and leaves the row in the middle of the field. Now, one way flowing it requires a special type of flow, a reversible flow or one way flow. In this method, no dead furrow or back furrow are left in the field. This is a chisel flow. And this is multiple flow. Convert the soil term residue uh, under the soil surface. This is a chisel flow or subsoiler. Uh, it is uh, used to uh, break the hard pan of the soil and it uh, penetrates uh, near about two to three feet into the soil. Uh, you can see here the numbers of shines with and. This is multiple flow again. Uh, this is a subsoiler. This part is called as a subsoiler. Okay. Uh, okay. Now we stop here. Uh, and again, I want to share to you the uh, another um, that. Uh, <coughs>